Howdy, streamers. I know we've lost some good programs along the way, and I thought I'd just give this one a trial. Uh, we've lost things like Soundflower, uh, Jack Pilot doesn't seem to work so much anymore, uh, but I thought Loopback being the replacement for Soundflower might be something that's quite useful. Uh, and I, what I wanted to do was see if I could br broadcast or use my broadcast chain and put that in so I could actually hear what I'm broadcasting out to the world uh, and instead of listening to it posthumously or, or after the effect in post-production and having to set everything up beforehand. So I just thought I'd give this a go and uh, let's see how it happens. Uh, we'll pull it all together. So first of all, we need a, a new session. And when you open up Loopback, this is what it looks like. Uh, you can play a track from iTunes. I can add that as a source. So that's the source there. If I click on options and mute while I'm capturing, that way there's no kind of internal feedback I don't want. But just to check that things are going properly, I'm just going to enable at the moment my USB codec, which is going out so I can actually hear back what's happening. So, yeah, looks like it's working all right. And I can rename that if I want to. We'll call it loopback audio just for easy sake. So the reality is here I can add another element. As long as that program is open, you can select it from the drop-down box. So I could put in there Radio Logic DJ as well. One of the other important things you need to do is actually set your uh, input so that you can pick it up inside Element, which is going to be the next program that we use. So you go to Input and select what we've just made, Loop Back Audio. Perfect. So now the input of whatever we're sending out of here is going to go into the new device, and that new device is Element. So you probably won't see these titles just as yet, but if you start a new session, and the best thing to do is get it up and running, and you'll look at the top one, that is your input, and then the one right underneath on the bottom left will be your output. So if I go to input and I select loopback audio, because that's the one we're dragging the signal from. So it's coming from loopback. So whatever we sent into that is going to go in. The output, on the other hand, we want to send that back to my USB codec. So that's what's coming out of my mixer. Make a connection, just click and drag and let it go. Just as easy as that. Now what I can do is actually add in some processing now. So this is the broadcasting chain that I will do. So at the moment, I'm just going to just release those outputs uh, just so that I can put in a new something in the chain there. So just click and drag, nice and simple, let it go, and there is your plugin. So as long as you've got plugins set up inside of uh, your machine, then you can do that. So there we go. So now I just make a connection from one to the other. Nice logical chain of command, really, isn't it? And then you can adjust your settings to, to suit. So in this case, I've got it set as a compressor. And it's just going to grab the, the peaks, the early peaks of anything that might be over the top. So another one that I normally use as well is also the VCL25A. So again, just select it, drag it, drop it. So normally you could do this all in one big group. Uh, but just for the sake of letting the audio flow, I can show you how to make connections. I'm just going to release that one. So disconnect, inputs. So we don't want double inputs going there. We want it to come in the right flow of signal. And now I can just set the, uh, the threshold to what I want so that it's going to deal with the music the way that I need to. There we go, and just a little bit of compression there. So you just follow the chain. All it's doing is following a chain from one effect to the next. So we've used loopback, straight into element, and then straight down. So I can add another effect in there as well. So at the output, I use another VCL373 from Fuse Audio Lab. Set that to limit mode. And just for ease of sake, I'll show you again. Just release those inputs. Take the inputs from... Uh, off the outputs from the VCL25A to the inputs of the 373 and then back out to the main codec again. And you can move these around nice and simple like. And I've got another one to put in there as well and I had to think of the name of it for a minute. Got to make my adjustments and my settings in there as I need to. 
So much more could now these I've tested already somewhere else, so I sort of roughly know where they need to be. So there you go, you can still hear the signal is coming through and now it's actually being processed by all of these uh, plugins in the side chain. So what I'm looking for now is I'm actually looking for the little bass boost and, and top end boost which is the 258A from Fuse Audio Labs as well which I like. I use this in my broadcast chain as well. So again I'll just disconnect those inputs from there and show, drag it output to input, output to input. There we go, now that's back in the path. Just insert it where you want, drop it down to 40 cycles, do a little bass boost, pop it up to 10,000 cycles, and a little bit of 2 dB of gain on there as well. So you can see how simple it is, if you just double click, you will open up each of the um, plugins and you can see it and adjust it as you need to. There's little blue off buttons there as well, or mute, and you can also click on the cog on those little side chains. And there you go, you can see it running. So it's running in VU mode, so I can see the positive input of what's actually going in to that device, just because this one can do that, which is nice. So you click on your, double click on your session there, you can actually see what is inside your graph, which is really helpful. So if you go down to uh, Node, double click on that, click on Sticky, and that will actually automatically jump around to the right thing, everything you touch will move over and you'll get pop it up in the right place so you can actually see where it is, just check you've got everything going to the right direction. There is your sample rate, so the sample rate will set that for the highest we've got which is 48,000 hertz, and uh, low latency at 0.3 milliseconds. So if you had a, a USB microphone, you could try plugging that in and see if there's not much of a delay that it sounds weird to yourself when you plug that into uh, loopback. So you could use that as another device. One thing to be careful of is the monitoring. So if you leave that on, you'll actually get a loop and you don't want a loop as such because that will give you a feedback and they'll be weird. So you can also adjust the output inside of loopback for each of the uh, each of the sources before that goes into the main channel output. And you've got different options there that you can utilize with pass through as well. So for me, I think this is usable uh, and the next thing I have to test is with a USB microphone or something like that just to see if it's gonna work that way. But give that a go and see if uh, the idea of loopback and element working together works for you. Cheers.